I'm Kurt Schwer, and this is the third video for research tools at the University of New Hampshire Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping Joint Hydrographic Center. In this video, I'll be showing you Emacs Org Mode, a tool for note taking, to do lists, project planning, repeatable research, and many other such things. It's a really nice tool, and that Unlike some other organizational systems, it's completely plain text, so you can always read and search your notes, even if you stop using Emacs in the future. So let's take a quick look at um, what we have to do with Emacs and org mode. So I'm going to start off by opening up a file, in, I'm going to call it example.org, and that'll start us off in org mode. And in org mode, each entry starts with a star. It's very much like a markup language you might see like Wikipedia's. And so this is a headline. And before we get too far into it, I just want to mention that if you have a Ubuntu Linux box, you will have to install it. Um, so if you want to install it, you'll most likely have to run something like sudo apt-get install-org. Now, uh, or it could be org mode, I think it's just org. So once you've installed org mode, um, we also are gonna have to do something really quick here, and that's set up a .emacs file. In that .emacs file, it actually controls what Emacs does on startup, and it gets things ready for us. Uh, so I'm gonna split the window in two with a control X two, and I'm gonna do a control X, control F to go open up the .emacs file. Now, unfortunately, this is in a different language than you're probably used to. This is written in a language called Emacs Lisp. You don't need to know anything other than to copy this basic stuff. And then after you paste this into your .emacs file and save it, you'll need to restart Emacs. In this, it will actually uh, install org mode into Emacs, and then it does some setup with something called org babble that we'll get into, and it sets up some keyboard shortcuts that are not necessarily defined. They have, these are the defaults that most people use, but you may need to do other commands if, if you're having conflicts with other Emacs tools. So you'll be able to paste that in from the Emacs org mode site underneath the install and the activate section of their manual. So I'm going to close that up with a control X zero and we're back to our org mode file. Now inside of these headlines, you can actually have subsections so for example, add text to file, restart Emacs. So now we have several different sections and you can see the color is changing. The top level ones are blue. And in this case, the second level ones are green. And you can have more at any number of levels, a third level. Now for each of these, there's a shortcut to expanding and collapsing these to handle basically being sort of an outline mode, and that's the tab key. So if you want to expand and collapse your org mode tree, we'll use the tab key. So if I press tab on this one, you'll see that at the very end of the line, right here, there are three dots that have replaced that entry. If we press tab again, in the entry, it'll reappear. Now you can do that for a top level one, like that. And you can also notice that when you, un when you open it back up, you'll only see the next level entries that they'll be collapsed to. And you can hit tab on each of those and expand them. Now I just hit shift tab. So if you hold down the shift key and press tab, that cycles the global uh, collapsing or expanding of org mode. So shift tab, this is something new. We haven't seen that before. So this is, this is the shift key, sort of an unusual one. You might not hit that with most other programs. And shift tab, that will expand and collapse all entries. Now, one thing I do want to show you real quick before we go into more stuff in the actually writing text is 
I'm writing it right now up at the top, pound plus startup colon and show all. If you do this, when you open up a new Emacs org file, this will all be showing. If we close this file and restart it without that, you're going to see just the closed up uh, hierarchy of nodes at the top level. So you'll be missing most of your data and it, it may be a little disturbing when you're not getting used to, you're still getting used to the uh, org mode way of doing things. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about adding text. You can type whatever you want, hello world for example, but you can also do uh, a number of formatting basics. You can make bold text by putting stars around it, or if you put slashes, you get italics, or if you put underscores around it, underline with underscores. Now that one's a little hard to see. There's actually an underscore right here and an underscore here. And there's two other ones that I'll use fairly often in my work. And the one is for a little code samples. We put equals around it and verbatim. So with that, you're seeing a slight preview here, but let's actually take a look at how Emacs org mode will actually export this to a final product. For much of the time that I use org mode, I'm actually just in org mode, but it's often nice to be able to export stuff. And for example, the research tools course, if you're looking at the web pages, those are org mode exported HTML. So let's learn how to export. And in that way, you'll see what this formatting is looking like. So the export command, I'll back up here, is control C, control E. And that brings you up to this menu of all the different possible export formats that are available. And there's quite a few, but the key ones we're looking for are actually the export and open in browser. This is the most convenient one for working with HTML. So I'm gonna go ahead and press B as in boy. And what that does is it actually starts up Firefox. And you'll see here our org mode file that's been exported to HTML. And you'll see that it's exported to the same directory we're in research tools and it's called it example.html to match our example.org. So you can see here in our section five, add text, we have our hello world and we have bold italics underline code and verbatim. Code and verbatim look basically the same, so they're not all that useful to you just pick one typically for code. So you can close that up by pressing the X here. And then so we'll do control C, control E, and then the letter B. And that's export to HTML and open in web browser. In our case, that's Firefox. Now we can also write comments in here. So if you need to comment things out and make notes to yourself that aren't gonna be in the final product, you can just put a pound in the beginning of a line. And this is a comment. This is a comment. Or if you have an entry that you don't want to end up in there, you can always say comment is the first word and say do not export if you have this tag. So this will not go to HTML. So if we do a control C, control E, and then a B, that will export again into our Firefox. And if we look here and we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see a section six comment and there's nothing in it. You'll also notice as we build this up, we're getting a table of contents for free. So org mode is doing some nice stuff where we can go and say, click on a particular section and it will take it, take us right there. Okay. Now let's move on to lists. Lists are great in that you can just start typing. And so we have an, an entry, another entry, and you just put a dash at the beginning, a space, and then you just start typing. You can also have sub lists another entry 
Now one thing you can also do is you can highlight a region, so I've done control space to set the mark, moving up, and I just want to export this so we're not looking at the whole document. You know, now I can type control C, control E, and then B, and you'll see here I've only got the section with our little list in it. Now the number, be warned, is not going to match the number of where it is in the document, so it's going to reorder it and start with one. But here you can see we have two lists and we have, we have a primary list with a sublist here. Now it gets fancier, we can do a dash and two square brackets with a space in between and a space after, and this is a to-do item. Now you can turn on and off to-do items, so we can change the state of a to-do with control C Control C. So I'll do that now. Control C, Control C. We now have an X right here on the left. And if we do Control C, Control C again is not done. In this way, you can set up predefined checklists of things you might need to do for a task, paste that into an org mode file, and use it to track your task through a particular job. So a finished task has and capital X. Now, do not use a lowercase x. All right, great. So that's a list. Pretty easy. And um, let's now talk about to-do items. And Emacs has a way to handle in org mode to do's for a whole thing. Now if I press shift and the right arrow, I can create a to-do for that. So that was shift and right arrow. If I do it again, it'll switch it to done. And then if I hit it a third time, it'll go away. So creating to-do and done items. You could also just type done or to do in there, fair enough, but uh, the key is to make it pretty easy. So that was shift right arrow, shift left arrow, scroll through those. And if you find that those aren't enough for you, there's a, a way in the org mode to actually create other items like done, started, to uh, partially done, finished, like totally done, I'm sick of it. Okay, you can also use Control C, Control T. So we do a Control C, Control T. We're now done. Now when we save that and we export it, Control C, Control E, and then a B in our Firefox. And if we look at the done entries, we'll see a big green done or or a very big to do. Okay, so let's talk about date and time. Org mode has a sense of date and time. Unfortunately, no time zone support. So everything is done in the local time zone. So you better know where you are when you write this stuff. Slightly a problem for people on ships, but hopefully we'll come up with a good strategy for that. To enter in time, you can do a control C and dot, and that will insert a timestamp. So let's go ahead and do that. So control C and then a period or full stop. And now instead of just sticking in the time and date, it's going to stick in just the date and it's going to let us pick. So here I'm using the mouse and I can hover over something and pick a day of any one of the months around here. So we'll go ahead and pick tomorrow. And it's now inserted this date and time on here, or just the date without the time. Uh, we can also change the year by going to the year, holding down the shift key and pressing up. And we'll change the year by one year. If you go over to the month and you press shift and up or down, you'll change the month. And you can do the same with the day. So shift up or shift down, change 
by plus or minus 1. Now oftentimes you actually want to have the time with that. The way you do that is control U, control C dot. So let's go ahead and insert time stamp with time, not just date. So I'll do control U, control C, and then a period. Now the same thing, but if you notice down here at the bottom, you'll actually see a time in there. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And if you go to the time, you can change that up and down with holding down the shift and pressing the arrow keys. Now notice on the minutes, it's only going to jump by five so that you can move around the hour pretty quick. But if you want to do an inside five minute change, you can just delete that and put in the minute that you want. Great. Now we can also do links. You can just put in a web link, so http colon slash slash unh.edu. And if I click on that link, it'll start Firefox and take me right over to the UNH web page. If you want, you can actually create a title for it. So if we uh, don't want to see the whole web link, we can say, so for example, ccom.unh.edu and you'll use two left square brackets and then a right square bracket and a left square bracket and then on this part of the URL we'll actually just type in CCOM and that's going to be our title so we'll hit right square bracket and I'm going to type one more right square bracket and it's going to disappear. So now we have a link that's just the text that we want to have in there and it takes us right to the CCOM web page. Now you can also do control C, control L, and that will let you edit the, this uh, link. So let's give that a go. Control C, can, you, know, you see that at the bottom right down here, and control L, oops, pardon me, control C, control L. And now it's going to let us edit the link. So if we want to say google.com, and we changed that to be Google in the description and we've now changed it. So now we've created a link. That lets you put links either in text or wherever you want and you can make it look how you so desire. Um, now we can also tag entries. And what this lets you do is that you can actually press Control C, can Control C right here, and it's going to let you start tagging things. And you can go through these tags and pull out all the entries that have a particular tag. For example, I have a tag in my notes called Research Tools that I use for this class, and perhaps teaching, and in this case we're doing org mode. Now it's not very exciting with one tag, but if we make a second entry, second tagged entry, and I'm going to type control C, control C, and I type RE, it actually knows about our prior tags and can help us. Now if I make control C, control C again, and let's do another one. Uh, let's just say a raster for something random. And now we have two tags that start with R, and let's create a third one. So third tagged entry, control C, control C to tag it, we type R and press tab, we get a completion list of all the things that match an R. So R A and we can hit tab and we now have raster. Now you can also click on things and it will help you go grab uh, anything matching those tags. So if we click here in one of these guys, we can uh, match some of these tags up and it will let you search on various entries. You can do all kinds of reporting based on that. Now, there's some pretty fancy stuff that we won't get into, but we'll do the basics of building tables. Now, you start off a table by pressing the vertical bar, and we have column 1 and column 2. So let's go ahead and do an export of this region so we can see it. Control C, Control E, and then a B. And it doesn't look like much yet. 
but here we've got column one and column two and some bars around it. Now if you want to put a, a line between entries, we can press a couple dashes and you press tab here and now we have a new table that's got uh, a blank line and a solid line in between it and we can type some data and you know some numbers whatever we want and if you hit enter it'll keep adding lines and as you fill it up with stuff it looks pretty horrible this way but if you press tab it'll rebuild your table and make it very nice you can also do all kinds of math just like you would in Excel so you can do reporting in this you can calculate column sums and all sorts of fancy math tricks so let's go ahead and export this column and see what we've got here control C control E and then a B and if you look here we have that for the dashes of the line right here and we've got our columns going right below now if you want to have lines all the way around there's a way to do that and in the class notes I will actually have the line that you can paste in right above here that would tell it to put solid lines around the entire entry now with code Org mode is actually very powerful in terms of dealing with code. It has a subtool called Babel that speaks many languages. And with Babel, we can start saying things like begin, source, and sh for a shell script, pound plus end, src. And in there, we can say echo hello world. And we now have a script. And if we export this, C, E, and then a B. It'll put it in a nice little block for us. So we have our code examples in blocks. But better yet, if I put my cursor in here and I do control C, control C, it asks me if I want to evaluate or run this block and we can say yes and out comes the result, hello world. So you can actually put working source code inside of your org mode file. Now if we try to export this, and I'm going to make a quick entry here, source code, and I'm going to press control L to recenter this. Now I'm going to highlight it, control space, move the arrow keys down, and now I'll highlight that region and I'll put it into HTML with control X, control E, and a B. And unfortunately, it didn't actually show us this hello world. So what we can do is we actually have to tell it that we actually want to see the results in there. And you could say exports both up here. And if we do a control C, control C again, type yes, evaluate it. Our, close that up. Try this again. Save it. Control C, Control C, type yes. Okay, nothing changed, um, pardon me for that. So let's export that, Control X, Control E, and then a B. Um, we don't need to run it now since it's already run. And there comes our Mozilla Firefox with our hello world written right in there. So this is the basis of why org mode is an excellent tool for doing repeatable research because you can write your report right in here, have your executable code and the results all together. This is often referred to as tangled code in that you've got your text description and your code all together and you have one document that can either become a PDF report or can actually be calculating things and actually doing work. So let's do another little example for another language, begin source Python and we'll do an export both again we'll end it with an end source right there and Python has a slightly different syntax so we'll print hello world from Python we'll throw in a comment and we'll go ahead and highlight this whole region control space at the top and now I'll do control C control E and then a B We'll go ahead and run this, and we'll run this one too. Now we have a slight problem here. We didn't expect to see none. So the way Python works is actually the mode for Python 
takes the return from that. So our command isn't quite right. We need to change this to be return. We'll go ahead and control C, control C to run that, type yes. Here are our results down below. And so now if we control space, highlight a region, control C, control E, and then B, we'll go ahead and rerun it for fun. Bring up Firefox, and there's our results from Python. Close tabs. Okay, so if you're in the Research Tools course, for the rest of the semester, one of your assignments is to actually use org mode every day you're in class to take at least one note. And that'll, I'll be grading you on going through and taking notes every single day, and I'll be looking at your org mode log. And the idea here is that you should, as a scientist, always be taking track, keeping track of what's going on in your research. And this will give you at least one way of doing it and have you experience it. It may not be the way that you end up like do, liking to do, but it hopefully will get you at least thinking about the idea. So here's how I do it when I create an entry. I usually put a star for a header, and I just write out the date that I want, or some comment. So I'll say today is September 25th in New Hampshire. I tend to put the location in here because I travel a fair bit, and it's always helpful to know where I'm at. And what I'll do then is I'll say Control C and then a period, and that will give me the date entered. I'll press Enter and then I tag it as day. So control C, control C, and then tag day. So that's my entry for the day, and then for each entry during the day, for example, uh, sitting in research tools, today we talked about grep. So in that way, You'll have an entry that runs for, for the whole year and uh, for the rest of the semester, and that way you can see what's going on as you go through the semester, and you can track your, your work. And as you figure out things that might not be in the research tools notes, you can add your own notes and be able to see them together and match up the day with the your notes and the lecture notes that I've written. Hopefully this uh, gets you excited about Emacs org mode. I haven't shown you even a small fraction of the tools that are available inside of org mode. But it definitely provides a very fancy way to mix languages and do all sorts of very exciting stuff that are difficult in almost every other way. Thanks very much for listening.